GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. Hey, this is April Hunter, and you are listening to the All Bets Are Off podcast with Robbie Vega. What's up, Rock Soldiers? Welcome back to the All Bets Are Off podcast. Today we have our second author that we've had on the show so far. Uh, this is going to be Lee Painter. Uh, Lee is the author of The Pine Baron's Devil. So if any of you are into horror or the Jersey Devil or cryptids or anything like that, then this is a great podcast for you. If you're somebody who just loves reading a good book, this is a great podcast for you. I just finished the book myself. I'm not going to give uh, much of it away before I get Lee on the phone because I want her to tell you about it. But just make sure that you check that out. And let us know what you think, let her know what you think, and of course, she'll leave you with all of her social media and things like that so you can keep up with her and the goings-on in her life. So, without further ado, I will get her on the phone, and here is a clip from my EP, Angels and Demons. This is Good Witch, Bad Bitch. How you doing? I'm great. How are you? Doing good. Thank you for doing this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course, Robbie. Thank you. All right. So first thing I want to start with is, is this your first book? Yes, it is. It's my my first work of fiction. Okay. So can you give the listeners just like a a brief synopsis of what your book is about before we go forward? Sure. Well, it's a novella, so it's not a full novel. Um, It is uh, under 30,000 words, but longer than Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. So it's a quick read. Um, It comprises of four separate short stories. They're standalone stories, but they are connected, and it's all about the Jersey Devil and the Pine Barrens. Um, So if you're familiar with the story, New Jerseyans believe that there is this creature that roams around the Pine Barrens, which is a very dense very preserved forest and uh, there's been some missing travelers that have gone through the pine barren there's have been farm animals that have been slaughtered and you know there's no tracks no footprints and uh the legend is that it's the the jersey devil who's doing all this so my story is a little bit different um but uh basically uh the jersey devil is the the main character throughout all the stories so what actually inspired you to write this this book so I'm from the area. I'm from southern New Jersey, and I grew up um, in different parts of southern New Jersey that touch the Pine Barrens. And growing up, children have heard these nightmare stories from our parents. They never shielded us from anything. And uh, my brother, my younger brother and I, uh, we loved being scared. And we loved hearing stories about the Jersey Devil. And we ended up going to a small library in Tuckerton. Uh, we had to live there for a few months when we were having a house built in Hamilton. And we just found all of these books, some for adults, there were some for children, all about the Jersey Devil, all about the Pine Barrens. And we just kind of absorbed all of them. And uh, we always loved campfire stories. And I got to an age where I was reading a lot. So I started feeling very confident that I could tell my own stories. So uh, from middle school age, I want to say I was in sixth grade when I started um, creating my own stories, but they were also informed from my nightmares that I was having. I was having these, what do you call them, night terrors, where someone's in your room oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can't move. And for some reason, I always thought that was the Jersey Devil. To me, I always believed he was more man than beast. And so that's how I would create my own my own stories. They were kind of informed from my own nightmares, and I would create these stories specifically for my younger brother. And he always loved them. And to me, it, it always made me feel really good when he 
would say at the end of a story, like, oh, that was a good one. So I've had these stories in my, my back pocket basically for years. The last one that I wrote for him, I was in high school and he had told me when we were in our 20s, he asked me, he's like, I would really love it if you were to write these down because I would love to scare my own children someday with these stories. <laughs> so I kept promising, like, yes, 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 we'll do it, I'll do it. And um, he went to Afghanistan. He was a Marine and he came back with PTSD very very badly. And he ended up passing away from a heroin overdose in 2014 at the age of 29. Oh, wow. And he had a son. So then it just became like after he passed away, I'm like, okay, I need to do something to honor his memory. And I, I remember that I had promised him I'd write these down. So there's a difference between writing stories down that you've always told orally and as a child <laughs> um, <laughs> to writing them down and then thinking that, okay, I'm going to have a larger audience than just my brother. So they became way more mature and much more detailed writing them down. So they are different than what my brother would remember. And there is one story in there that was brand new that he never heard of. I hired a professional editor who's like, you really need one more story to tie all these together. So <laughs> I wrote that in a couple of months. So there is one story that he, he never heard. Oh, wow. Well, I am very sorry to hear about your brother, but that's an amazing way to, um, you know, honor him is to put those down. So very cool. And I'm glad that you shared that with us also. Thank you. No, I love talking about him. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, not a problem. So we know you're interested in the Jersey Devil because you're you're from that area. Um, were you interested in other cryptids also like Bigfoot and like, you know, Dogman and things like that? So uh, we always used to love watching Unsolved Mysteries too as kids. That those were what we were into in the X Files. So, whenever something would come up about you know Bigfoot sightings, we were glued to the TV. We were really interested. We loved Aliens too. The movie Alien and the sequel Aliens were our two favorite movies. So we always loved anything that was kind of scary or unusual or um, fantastical. But the Jersey Devil was my number one favorite. I don't know if you would consider the Headless Horseman from Sleepy Hollow to be a cryptid. I always did. So I consider him, yeah, a cryptid. So he'd be my, my second favorite. I didn't get into the Mothman prophecies until the movie actually came out. So mm -hmm. the one that I ever really heard of as a kid growing up were the Jersey Devil, Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster. And, of course, I read all those stories anytime I could find something on them. And to, to be honest, it's kind of surprising. There's not many well-crafted stories um there's like you know little tidbit sightings a couple of news articles but um no one's really like done a deep dive into some of these you know stories as you know main characters right yeah and that kind of brings me to my next question because i read the book i thought it was absolutely great so do you have plans you. to do another book and if you do would you be doing it on any other types of cryptids or are you going to stick with the jersey devil so I'm not sure. So the reason why I wrote the book was for my brother. I never had any interest in being an author otherwise. And like I said, these were informed by my nightmares. And I still have one exact same nightmare. Um, it happens to me. It reoccurs every single year. Close around the same time, like around September, October, I usually get it. It's the same fright nightmare where someone's in my room. To me, I don't know. Um, it would have to be uh, something that would inform the story where I think that I can do, you know, the Jersey Devil justice. So to me, the stories that I created almost felt very real to me because they were coming from a place where, you know, in my mind as a child, they were real. You know, I was having these nightmares and like, this was, this was real to me. I was getting an insight, you know, the Jersey Devil was talking to me somehow and I was learning things. So yeah, I don't, I don't know unless I get inspired or something else, where, you know, like I said, inform it so that I think it could do you know, the Jersey Devil Justice, I would do it again. I am interested in writing, not necessarily about other cryptids, though, because, uh, again, there's a, a level of respect that you have to give those tales, especially to the people that are from those areas. You know, people are very passionate about their cryptids, <laughs> and uh, they take them very seriously, and um, that's why I was always worried about putting this book out there for not just my brother but for a bigger audience because especially Jerseyans yeah, they're a tough audience you know for, <laughs> for them to be impressed by by something especially of a creature that they know so well or they know intimately themselves people have had sightings um, <laughs> yeah it, it would be uh, it would be a big undertaking to do a second book yeah right so you now you mentioned that you would still be interested in writing so what other topics uh, do you have in mind if that's okay to ask Sure. So my brother, who I love talking about, he went 
he was a different person when he came back from Afghanistan. And he went through something that he really couldn't tell me. And we were really close. We were best friends. And he would tell me everything. But he could not tell me what happened in Afghanistan. And he loved being scared. That was the, the crazy thing. Like, that's how I knew him. He loved horror stories. He loved scary movies. He loved it when I would try to scare him. And something that he saw or did over there scared him so much that he couldn't talk about it so after he passed away i I met some of his buddies um, from the marines that were over there with him or that went over in a second wave that weren't actually with his battalion but with a, a different company and they told me some things and they would never go on record about it so i started thinking how can i tell their story about what happened and not get them in trouble So writing something that would be historical fiction would be a way to accomplish that and also kind of tell my brother's story about it and um, have him as a character. So that's a story that I really want to tell and that would be a full novel. It's just very emotional for me. So I start writing and then I do have to take breaks. So it's taking much longer than I would like to, to get through it. But again, it's something where it's such a big deal to me and to his friends that I, I want to make sure I do a good job. Wow. Okay. I can definitely understand that. So this is something that you're already working on, but like you said, you, you're just taking your time with it because of the emotions. Exactly. And I've had um, some conversations uh, with some of his friends that are willing to tell me some things. And um, it, it's, it, it's difficult to know when to push for more details and when not to. So that's that's what's taking some time. It's <laughs> I, I don't want to um, create any any further pain for somebody. So right, right. Um, that's where that's coming from. Okay, okay. So could you see yourself also continuing on in the horror genre after the the historical fiction, or do you even consider that part of that same genre because of of how I guess, for lack of a better word, disturbing it could be? It's going to be a little bit. Of a combination of things. The way that I'm looking at it now is kind of like a ghost story. So within those same realms of being somewhat fantastical, somewhat historical fiction, you know, whenever everything happened with my brother, um, I was a few years younger. So I'm still writing it from that perspective of uh, being a younger woman. And you know, it, it, it's evolving. Like it, the more I learn about what happens and the more I learn about some of the other characters that, you know, were involved in all of this. Yeah, I'm definitely like informing it <laughs> and it's coming together in different pieces. So, um, we'll see what happens, but yeah, I do love the horror genre. I've always loved being scared, but I also have a very, a very high bar that I've set for myself too, because yes, I will, I will be so cruel to a movie that I don't think, you know, has raised the standards or has something that is too much of a, like, oh, I saw this coming, you know, from a mile away. <laughs> right. So if I'm that critical of horror movies, I know other people are too. So I would want to make sure that it is, you know, up to par with people's standards for horror nowadays. Okay. So was it your brother that got you introduced to like horror movies and, and things like that? Or was it the other way around? It was the other way around. I was the older one. Uh, I'm older by three years. Okay. And yeah, I think it's just a combination of we lived back in the woods. We would get lost. And that was where the one fear always came from. That's like my number one fear is always getting lost and not knowing how to get out of something. I'm not I love being a problem solver, but I'm not good at it. I wish that was a talent that I had, and I like to challenge myself, but I don't have that natural talent, and I'm not a survivalist, so <laughs> I do panic. Um, so it's it's something where, like, that is a fear that I really tap into, and yeah, we, we used to get lost a lot, and there were stories where if you walked into the Pine Barrens, there was a chance that you would be lost forever, because it has happened to people, and there was even a, um, a Sopranos episode about that, where the Russian runs through, they were going to, you know, dump in the Pine Barrens because you know it's so vast and it's so head spinningly confusing because everything looks the same once you reach a certain point inside of it Mm -hmm. um but yes you get turned around so uh you know uh, i think having that fear and then also being a child where the grown-ups would also tell you scary stories (laughs) like it was never yeah no one ever coddled us that way you know as a jersey kid like you know parents always told you about this you know haunted crazy creature that would come and snatch you (laughs) (laughs) so i think it's uh yeah i think it's a combination of like you know adults scaring us me being scared in in the woods and then just kind of like tapping into that as like a sense of fun you know that i got my brother into it okay very cool so what are some of your favorite horror movies that uh that you've seen over the years or some that you always are like a go-to for you 
that are go to for me. Um, so I, I do love Bram Stoker's uh, Dracula. Um, oh, so that good. One. I love vampire movies. Yeah, vampire movies. I think are a type of character that so many people can get into, and it, it's a scary character because they're also seductive, and they can just seduce you in different ways. And that's something that, especially as an adult and as a woman and hormones, you know, you don't really realize that as a kid. But like when you get to a certain age, you're like, oh yeah, I can definitely see where I can fall, and you know. Uh, pray to somebody else. <laughs> um, so vampires, I think, are always scary. There was one that was done. Um, oh my gosh, the name is escaping me, but it was a vampire movie done um, from the found footage type of story. Uh, what is it called? It's so good, but it, it was fairly recent. But it was all done like from found footage, and um, that one was done great. Um, I remember being scared of the ring when that one first came out. I'm trying to think of some other ones that I always really liked. Rosemary's Baby, when that one first, when I first saw that one, mm-hmm. uh, I was pretty intrigued with the build up to it. That's the other thing that I like about scary movies and scary stories. Is you know, as long as the build up keeps coming and then they have a good creepy new ending, um, that's something that I think is really hard to do and pull off. If you can do a psychological thriller. That's so hard to pull off. And if you can do it well, it's so impressive. And another movie that I saw, I wouldn't necessarily call it a horror movie. It was more thriller, but um, it's a movie Hush. It's oh, about yeah. a, a woman who's deaf. Oh, my gosh. That one terrified me. Yeah, that is a great, <laughs> it was great done movie. so well. Yes, it was done so well. So, yes, those types of movies, yeah, if you can combine psychological horror with an actual like horror story and you can do it well, I mean, that's, you know, your genius if you can pull it off. I agree. And Hush, actually, of course, takes place in the middle of the woods. So there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something about the woods. Yeah, right. So uh, how about books? Are there any horror books that you were really into before you wrote yours? So, um, most of the books that I love to read are truer stories or historical fiction. And, um, I was really into, uh, Greg Olson's Don't Ever Tell and Jack Ketchum. Uh, he is somebody that I don't think ever got the praise he deserved or the recognition he deserved. Uh, he wrote a combination of horror stories, like really gory graphic horror stories that I think are even better than Stephen King's and really creepy imagery. And I mean, Offspring is one that's coming to mind, Uh, but he also wrote a uh, historical fiction story and uh, I think it was called The Girl Next Door. And it was a true account uh, about this poor teenage girl whose parents were killed in in an accident. She had to go and live with a distant relative who abused her and the woman ended up getting the entire neighborhood kids involved in the abuse as well. And it's based off of a true story that actually happened. And those are the things that turn my stomach when you know that there's actual real evil in the world Mm -hmm. and that people are capable of doing this because you're reading it and you're like, this is fantastical. And then you realize like, no, this actually really happened to somebody. Those are inspiring because they allow me to kind of tap into a different part of humanity um, or a different part of my brain where I naturally want to believe the best in people and that people are inherently good. And then I read something like that and read that it has you know some true origins and I realize like, oh, I'm really wrong and I'm really naive. <laughs> so those are inspirational in, in that aspect. So they get me to think. <laughs> yeah, no, I can understand that for sure. For sure. So any of the, the movies and the books that you like, did they play a part in uh, you writing the, the fourth story that you hadn't already had? Did you pull inspiration from any of those places? So I ended up writing the stories more like literature, and uh, my inspiration behind that would be the, the Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving. It, he was someone else that I also grew up with. I wouldn't necessarily say that this is my true style, but this is like what I was informed of when I was a kid, and those were the stories that I, I originally like listened to when I was a child. So um, I wouldn't say like this particular story that I wrote is my natural style of writing, but uh, that's kind of like where that place was coming from and how I was crafting the story around it. But I would say that um, I think the um, the imagery and some of the 
some of the, you know, sounds and like the, the descriptions of the forest are all coming from a place that I know really well. Like I just tapped into what I remembered as a kid. The characters that I had to write more depth for because I'm now an adult and I'm now writing them down. It's not an oral story, to, you know, told at a campfire. Right. I had to tap into my journalism backgrounds and all the characters are based off of real people that were in the news. So for example, like you read the, the first chapter with the mother. I based that off of Susan Smith, who killed her two children. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> and the, the third story, the one that my brother hadn't read, I based that character off of uh, Bobby Fisher. And I actually learned chess in order to play, you know, play into uh, that character. <laughs> wow. Okay. So now you, you touched on that you have a background in journalism, and you were, you were previously a news anchor, right? I was a news anchor briefly, um, mostly a, a news reporter. So I was more like in the field. I wasn't really in the studio. So I would be the one out in the wildfires covering like, oh, the wildfires like, you know, encroaching on us right now. We got to get out of here. Gotcha. <laughs> kind of <thing. laughs> I was a natural disaster reporter for the most part and a crime reporter. <laughs> oh, wow. So and then you made the transition from that to an author. That's that had to be something that you never saw coming. How did you end up doing that? It, it seems like it was almost easy for you the way you talk about writing and, and always having that mind to tell stories. Actually, it was really hard because as a journalist, I am used to writing facts and telling things like it is, and I'm not embellishing anything, and it's just very simple writing. Writing fiction, however, you know, you have to embellish the story. It's storytelling, and it's not real. So for me, it was actually very difficult. Like, the style of it is completely different, and I think... What worked for me, making it a novella instead of a full novel, I have a very short attention span. Even when I read books, um, unless it's a really compelling book like a Jack Ketchum book, I have trouble getting through it. Um, and there's, you know, sometimes people write way too much prose and they write way too much detail and I'm like just bored with it. So for me, you know, I'm writing more for me, my audience, <laughs> <laughs> audience of one. So if I start getting bored, then I'm thinking, the, you know, the, the reader is getting bored. So that's why I'm like, oh, just kind of short. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair enough. So here's the question of the day. Do you believe in the Jersey Devil? Oh, 100%. Yes. Have you had your own experience by chance? Uh, just the nightmares that I've had. I've always thought that this night terror that would come in was the Jersey Devil. Mm -hmm. And like I said, he was more man to me. The one thing that I can equate it to, and it was not until like years later, what was like 2009 when the, the stories of Slender Man came out on Creepypasta, yes. where I was like, yeah, that is him. Like that is so much more, you know, the Jersey Devil to me as like more of a male figure that is, you know, tempting in a way and you don't know what he wants you don't know what he wants of you you don't know if you should try to figure that out or not <laughs> um, but the jersey <laughs> devil um those stories have been around for for years and the pine barrens itself is so well preserved and you know it's so untouched and it almost seems like it's an entity of itself that it's out for its own self-preservation you know i have no doubt that there must be something else in there that we don't know about and that wants to keep itself secret. And you know, there's some things that are just unexplained. So yeah, no, I, I hope, I hope he's out there. <laughs> right. I know I'm in the same boat as you. That's why I was curious. Cause I do believe in all those cryptids and, uh, you know, Bigfoot and Loch Ness and Jersey devil and all that. And, uh, which is how I found your book in the first place, looking for books on things like that. But before I, I let you get out of here, uh, can you plug all your social media and just let our listeners know where they could follow you, keep up with any new writings and just let them know where they can buy your book. Yes, absolutely. So my book is only available on Amazon. I did the whole Kindle um, Unlimited uh, deal with Amazon for the first couple of months. So it's only available on Amazon. Uh, but uh, I am going to be launching my website hopefully this weekend. And that'll be leepainter.com. And painter is spelled with a Y instead of an I. And my uh, social media, I do have a Facebook page, but I'm not on there as often. Um, but that's also under the same handle as my Instagram, which I'm not very often. Instagram is Tainted Candy. And it's tainted and then lower underscore candy. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it. And I will, you know, of course, preach to everybody who will listen that it's a great read. And I hope everybody goes out and uh, gets it. And again, that's on Amazon for everybody listening. So, Lee, thank you so much. I, I loved this. This was great. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Not a problem. You take care. You too. Bye-bye. All right, Rock Soldiers, so that was Lee Painter. Make sure you check out The Pine Barrens Devil only on Amazon, Amazon exclusive right now. Her website will be launching. 
maybe even by the time that this airs for all we know. Um, so we will, of course, keep you updated. And if there's any new books or anything like that coming out, maybe we'll have Lee back on to uh, tell you about them and spark your interest on those as well. And again, I've read the book. It's awesome. It was great that she uh, took the time to be on the show. So let us know what you think. You can follow us on all social media at ABAOPod and uh, just keep up with us. We're running polls. We're promoting we're sharing pictures we got all kinds of stuff going on so we will catch you next time on the all bets are off podcast thank you again The preceding presentation has been brought to you by the Gear Network. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Do you like sports, interactive polls, friendly banter from two guys that probably shouldn't even be on the microphone doing this stuff anyways? Well, if you do, then you're in luck. Us two knuckleheads, Brandon and myself, comprise the Listen In Podcast. That's right, Listen In, the podcast. We're talking sports. We're talking news. We're talking topical things. We're talking all sorts of things, my babies. And you are all invited to listen in right here on the Gear Radio Network.